Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an envelope animation with Divi's scroll effects. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So uh, the very first thing we need to do here is to add a brand new page. So I'm going to click here on add new and we're going to give this page a name. Now we can name this whatever we want. And also this technique can be also used on an existing page or even on a pre-made layout. So for this example, I'm just gonna do it on this page. So I'm just gonna call this envelope. Use Diffy Builder. And by the way, you can also uh, go ahead and download this layout to the, on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. It's absolutely free, so you can use it for uh, any existing projects or any future projects. All right, so now that our page builder has loaded, I'm gonna come over here and click on start building. And then I'm gonna add a background color to our section. So I'm gonna come over here and click on this gear icon. Next, I'm going to come over here to background and give this a background color of white. So I have white here on my color palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Next, we're gonna come over here to design spacing and give this a top padding of 5VW. So we can see here, I have my defaults. So I just need to make sure that I reset everything here and use the right amounts. So in your case, you won't have this. So I'm gonna add my values here manually. So I'm gonna start by adding my top and I'm gonna set it as 5VW. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna set it to zero. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the advanced and then I'm gonna click on visibility. So here on visibility, we need to target the uh, horizontal and vertical overflow and we need to set this to hidden. So I'm gonna come over here, choose hidden, do the same here for the vertical overflow like that. Okay, so now that my overflows have been set, the next step now is to add my row. So I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna come over here to this plus button to add my rows and we are going to go with a single column. So just like what we did before, let's start by customizing our rows before we add any elements in there. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings and come over here to background. So our background color is also going to be white, just like what we did with our sections. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so moving on, next we need to come over here to design and uh, click on sizing. So here on sizing, we need to adjust the gutter width. So I'm gonna come over here and drag it all the way down to one. And for my width, I'm gonna set it to 90%. So I'm just gonna drag this slider here to 90%. And then for the maximum width, I'm gonna set this to 100%. Next, I'm gonna come all the way down here to spacing. And here is where we need to do a few adjustments. So we are going to start with our top and bottom padding. So here we're gonna set it at 14 VW. And notice that I'm using this chain because I need to apply the same value both to the top and the bottom. So that chain allows us to do that quickly. All right, so next we need to add our left and right padding as well. And this is going to be the same amount and it's gonna be 20 VW. Next, we're gonna come over here to border. And over here, we are going to add our corners at 20 pixels all around. So I'm just gonna come over here and add the value to one of the corners. So you can see here that my chain is activated. So that's why it's easy for my corners to have the exact same value. So now that we have this in place, next step is to go to our box shadow and we are going to go with the first option. And now that we have that selected, we need to add our vertical position. So for our box shadow vertical position, I am going to set this at 38 and the blur shadow strength is going to be 80 pixels. And now I need to add my shadow color. Now bear in mind that uh, if you really wanna use these colors or the exact same colors, I'm gonna leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So what you wanna do here is to click here on the eyedropper tool and then paste the values between the brackets like that. Now you wanna make sure you add your values within the brackets because if you don't, then things will get messed up. All right, so now that I have this all set, the next step now is to head over here to advanced and then click on position because here we need to set our Z index and this needs to be set to 11. So pretty much we've added everything that we need to do here. So I'm gonna save that. And then over here, we're gonna add a text module. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. 
Right, so now that we have our text module selected, all right, so now that we have our text module loaded, all we have to do is to remove some of this text because we need to assign a heading here. So I'm gonna highlight it and set it to heading two. Now let's set our heading two settings. So I'm gonna click here on design heading text and make sure you come to the heading two tab. So this is where we want to add our font and you can see here it's set to poppins and then on the text size, we are going to set it at 2VW. And by the way, this font here is free, so you can go ahead and use that absolutely free. Okay, so now that I've set it, in fact, let me go in here and just remove the, um, the weight and just leave it at regular. It doesn't need to be bold for this one. Okay, so now that we've set the size, we also need to go in and add a text module to the second column. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna come back over here and click on this plus button, search for my text module and select it. Now let's go to the settings. So over here on text, I'm just gonna make sure that I set this to open sans. So I'm gonna come over here on this drop down and search for my font, which is going to be open sans. I'm gonna select it. And this also needs to be irregular. And then finally, I'm gonna set my size and my line height. So over here on the text size, we're gonna set this at 1VW. And for my line height, I'm gonna set it at 2.6. Next, let's head over here to spacing and add our top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna select spacing and our top and bottom padding here is going to be 2VW. So I'm gonna activate my change so my value can be added both to the top and the bottom. And just make sure here that you've set it to 2VW. Okay, so now that we've added our top and bottom padding, the next step now is to add our buttons. So I'm gonna save this. And then I'm just gonna hover over this area here, click on this plus button and add my button module and select it. So here in the button text, we are going to say learn more. Now let's customize this button by coming over here to design button and activating use custom styles for button. So you can see here it's already activated. So uh, what I'm gonna do next is to set my button size. So my button text size here is going to be one VW. My text color is going to be white. And then it's time to add my, my background color. So over here, I'm gonna go in and set it to this color here, this bright blue. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to uh, use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Now, moving on, we also need to add a border radius. So here we can set it at 100 pixels. Let me, just, let me just go ahead and do that. And then the next step now is to set our button font, which is meant to be Poppins. Now here we can ma either make it bold or we can even just leave it as regular. It doesn't matter. And also you can make it all caps or you can just leave it as like small letters. So it's up to you how you want to set it up. But both of it, I mean, both of the ways actually work. All right, so now that we have this, the next step now is to just customize my button further by coming over here to spacing. So here on spacing, I'm gonna add one VW to the top and bottom, and then two VW to the left and the right. That's just so that I just give my button a bit of breathing space. So now that we've customized our button, we've customized our heading text and also our paragraph text, that it's time now to add a new row. So I'm gonna save this and then back over here, I am just gonna add a brand new row. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and we're gonna go with two columns this time. So before we add anything in here, let's work on our sizing. So I'm gonna click here on uh, row settings, click on a design sizing, and uh, we are going to go into our custom gutter width here and set it to one. Our width here is going to be 100%, and also here on the maximum width, we're gonna set this to 100% too. So this is where the envelope is going to be. Now let's head over to our spacing. So I'm gonna scroll further down here. And for our spacing here, I'm gonna add zero pixels to the top and the bottom. Activate my chain. Now to make sure the columns appear next to each other on smaller screens, we'll need to add this line of CSS to the rows main element. So let's do that right now by coming over here to advanced, custom CSS, and to the main element here, this is where we're gonna add the CSS code. Now, um, 
if you, you know what I mean, you can just copy and paste it by uh, heading over to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so now that I've added this, let's start adding all our elements to our columns. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to click here on this plus button and add an image module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. So now that we've added this image module, we want to make sure that that area there is empty. So let's go ahead and delete it. So you can see here now the image is gone and it looks empty. So the next step we need to do now is to start adding our design. I am going to come over here to my background and add a gradient. So here I'm going to add my first color and my first color here is going to be a color that has some transparency. So I'm just going to drag this right slider down and add my values between the brackets, just like that. Next, I am going to work on my second color. And again, I'm going to come over here, choose my second color. And notice that this time I don't need to add my gradient. So I'm just going to add it like that. And then making sure that my gradient type is set to linear. On my gradient direction, I'm going to set this to 150. And then uh, start and end position. We're going to set this to 50% and 50%. So you can see here in the preview that this is the shape that we are going to have. Now let's head over here to our padding because we need to change our module padding. So we're gonna come over here to design, spacing, and for our padding, we're gonna set this to 15 VW. Now this is going to be applied both to the top and the bottom. So make sure you set it to 15 VW. So I am going to clone this module and drag it into column two. So I'm gonna save that. And I'm just going to clone this and then drag one of them to the second column. So what we need to do next is to come over here now to this image module and just reverse our settings. So I'm going to come over here and click on background. And for our first color, I'm just going to go in and just replace this with my new settings. And then for my second color, come over here. And this time it's going to be this light gray. Making sure our gradient type is set to linear. This time our gradient direction is going to be set to 210. So you can see now it's the opposite. And then our start and end position is fine at 50% on uh, both sides. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've uh, added all this, the next step now is to create the bottom of the envelope and we need another row with the following structure. So let me just save this and show you what that needs to look like. So I'm just going to scroll down further here so I can get space to add a new row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and we need two columns like that. Okay, so now that we have this all set and that's going to be our layout, we also need to go into our settings. So I'm going to come over here and go into my row settings. So here on the row settings, we go to our design sizing and this is where again we need to make adjustments to our gutter width set it all the way here to one and then for our width we need to set it to 100 percent and this needs to be applied to the maximum width as well and this is going to match the width of our row just above okay so now that we have this all set we are also going to go into the spacing and add padding of zero both to the top and bottom so I'm going to set zero pixels here, both to the top and the bottom. And then moving on, I am going to also add, you know, that CSS code that we added earlier on to allow our columns to be next to each other, even on um, mobile devices. Yes. So that's what we also need to add here on the advanced custom CSS. And on the main element, I am just going to paste this CSS code. Now, remember, if you want to use the exact same settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So the next step here is to head over here to position. And here on position, we need to set our Z index to 12. OK, so this is the difference that we're going to add here on this row. OK, so now that we've added that, so the next step now is to add our image. So I'm going to save this. Click here on this plus button. And again, like we did before, we're going to add our image module. So I'm going to select it. And again, it needs to be removed here. So I'm just going to delete it. Next, let's add our gradient by coming over here to the background, clicking on the second tab 
and let's add our colors. So I'm going to start here with the first one here. Now, this is going to be a transparent background. So I'm just going to drag this slider down a little bit so that I can get my RGBA values. And then I'm going to paste my value in here. Moving on, I'm also going to add my second color by coming over here to the second gradient color and then just pasting it like that. Okay, so now that I have my two colors, I just want to make sure that my linear is set, my gradient type is set to linear. And then over here on the gradient direction, we are going to set it to 213 this time. And then start and end position is going to be at 40% for both start and end. Next, we need to come over here on design spacing. And this is where we're going to set our padding both to the top and the bottom. So once we're done with that, we're going to save this. And like we did before, we're going to clone this and drag it over to the right side. So now you can see here that I've cloned it. So we need to drag one of these and add it to the right column, just like that, dragging and dropping it. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to come over here to the second one. And we just need to make just a few minor adjustments here to the background settings. So here we are going to uh, take a look at our colors. So this is fine on the first color, but the second color here needs to be changed. So I'm going to go in and set my hexadecimal value for my colors. And also making sure that our gradient type is linear. The next step is to add our gradient direction. And instead of having at 213, it needs to be at 147 so that it just matches and shows that envelope that we need. Okay, so now that we have this, the uh, start and end position is okay. So we can just leave it as that. Now it's time to add our vertical motion to row one. So let's go ahead and save this and come over here to our first row. So to add our vertical effects, I'm going to come over here to row settings. Click on design. In fact, we need to go to advanced and then click on scroll effects. So we want the first one here activated and then enable vertical motion. Right, so with that enabled, we are going to go in now and add our specific settings. So let's start off here with our start and um, viewport. So I'm just gonna drag this all the way down here until I get to 68. But as I'm doing that, you notice that we also need to move this over here and let's do that until I get to about 81. Okay, great. And then this one here needs to be at 68. So we're going to keep going until we get to about 68. There we go. And then this one here needs to be at 95. So I'm going to drag it back. There we go. And now we are going to add our starting offset and we're going to set this to zero. And then our for our mint is going to be 6.5. And then our ending is going to be 16. All right, so that's pretty much all we need to do here. We're going to save this. We're going to save the page. And now we're going to exit the Visual Builder and test it out. All right, so as you can see here, as I'm scrolling, this is going to be the final result. So uh, go ahead, try it out and see how it uh, looks for you. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.